Hello, welcome back to Understanding the Gospel. My name is Lee Robinson I'm from Citywide Baptist Church in New London, Connecticut. We're located at 325 Broad Street in New London. Uh, Understanding the Gospel, this, uh, this show is exactly what it's titled as. Uh, our desire is to understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, the gospel means good news. The, the gospel is the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, most people know that, at least in our society right now. Um, most people know that there was this man, Jesus, who, uh, who lived and he died and, and supposedly he rose from the dead. Most people know that, but very few people, uh, including myself from having been raised in this area, understood uh, who really, who Jesus was and the significance of what he did and understand how that applies to us, understand what we need to do in response to that message. Um, the gospel is the central message of the Bible it's the central message of Jesus. When Jesus came, uh, Mark chapter 1 and verse number uh, 15, Jesus said, Repent and believe the gospel. That was the message that he preached. It was the message that the apostles preached. It's the message that the Bible is uh, trying to get us to understand. And why it's so important to understand this message is because uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it tells us that by believing in the gospel, that's how we're saved. And if we don't understand the gospel, uh, we don't understand what Jesus did for us. Uh, if we don't believe it and, and understand, um, the Bible says that we're, we're without hope. Uh, we're in our sins and we're not accepted by God and uh, deserve the, the wrath of God, the judgment of God on our lives. So this is a good, a, a good uh, show to tune into. Um, good subject, no other subject like this one. And uh, one of the things that we, we've been doing recently is having uh, people come on, share their testimonies, and, uh, and to talk about Scripture and understand uh, the gospel from people's lives. And uh, tonight we have Cody Short with us. Um, Cody has uh, um, recently been coming around our church and uh, good friends of ours and good friends of uh, Matt Bertles. He was on the show with us one day. And uh, so it's good to have you with us tonight, Cody, and uh, talk about uh, your story and uh, praise God together tonight. So... Yeah, um, so why don't you? Why don't we start by uh, first telling us um, like where are you where are you from? Where where did you grow up and everything? Uh, well, I grew up in a, a little town called Otsego, Michigan. It's uh, right next to Kalamazoo. It's about, uh, about right there on the map. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, grew up there. Uh, got out of high school and uh, joined the military, mm -hmm. Navy. Uh, so I served with. Uh, with Matt, as you said, uh, you had him on the show uh, right. a little while ago. Mm -hmm. So I served with him on the, uh, the U.S. Minnesota, and uh, you know, I, like at that time, I was uh, uh, pretty devout pagan uh, into idolatry and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there's this man on the boat, and he's, <laughs> you know, he's he's a very godly man. Yeah. And uh, all right, so before we get yeah. too much into yeah. that, so you're from Michigan, yep. right? Okay. And um, what was your when you were growing up? Uh, what was what was the atmosphere like in your home uh, with your parents? What what kind of beliefs did you have as you were growing up? Because you just you just <laughs> recently have become a Christian and become born again. Yeah. And uh, God's been doing amazing things in your life. Um, and so one of the things we want to do is to contrast um, right. how how we understand understood God before as to how we do now. So. Why don't, okay. why don't you share like kind of like what your ideas about God were and maybe what your parents believed uh, as you were growing up? Okay, so uh, so my household itself wasn't uh, wasn't a very good one. Um, my uh, well, to be quite frank, my parents were drug addicts, mm -hmm. um, and uh, at a young like young young age, I was in uh, I was in foster care, and uh, so I was adopted by this family. Well, not fully adopted. It's a really long story. Long story short, my parents got me back, grew up with them, still knew my foster family, really close to them, mm -hmm. and I actually regard my foster parents as my actual parents. Right. Um, but as far as my real parents, they weren't churchgoers or anything. And, uh, you know, I grew up think, uh, quite frankly, I grew up thinking uh, Jesus was just a crackpot magician. You know, right. like, yeah. Like, yeah. We, like, I didn't really know much. Uh, I knew, you know, growing up in America, I knew who God was, I knew who Jesus was, but I didn't really know anything other than that right and uh, now your foster parents though uh were they christians or what um was their... they're so my uh my foster mom's uh parents uh they're christians uh, uh my uh grandma on her side on that side was uh born again and she passed away and it actually uh 
it shook my grandfather uh, there, and he uh, he actually became born again. Um, as far as my foster mom, I'm not I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, I never actually really asked. I probably should. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, when I get home uh, someday, and then my foster uh, foster dad, same thing, uh, except they like they're pretty sure they're born again. I never actually mm -hmm. asked. Right. So. So pretty much like all of your time growing up, you didn't really get taught the Bible at nope. all, and obviously you went to public school, right? Yep. So, and they obviously <laughs> didn't teach you anything about no. God or the Bible there. No, I um, mean, we had, you know, we had Christian kids in, in school, and I thought they were, I thought they were weird, yeah. like, I'll be honest. Yeah. So. Yeah, I did too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I knew maybe of like uh, one, you know, that yeah. actually was a Christian, or that you would know that there was something different yeah. about them. You know, but um, it's uh, it's kind of sad because you know many times uh, it's America is called a Christian nation, um, but it's this is not a Christian nation. Well, I mean, you when it was whole, first founded, know, it yeah, probably right. was. Well, you, but. So you have a whole generation now, and and even more that has been raised having no clue mm -hmm. about who God is, and um, you know one of the reasons we're doing this and and doing many other things that we do is because uh, children are not learning the Bible anymore. And they need to. Uh, this is at the beginning of this country. Uh, you know, I don't know if you ever heard of uh, the Horn Book or the New England Primer. These were oh yeah, yeah. the New England Primer. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So these were the original school books <laughs> right. for American school children. Yeah. The Horn Book was actually uh, a little thing that would hang from their their hand. Oh, okay. Right here and yeah, stuff. And I've seen it. Has has never scripture on it. You know, that's how they it. learn yeah. their letters and and sentences and all these yeah. grammar. New England Primer is filled with, with scripture, the, the way that they learn the alphabet. It's kind of interesting we're talking about this right now. But, yeah. um, well, it's like but the, really, you yeah. know, it's, and it's, it's sad that, uh, myself included, um, if, you don't, if you don't go to church and you grow up uh, like in an average American home, um, people don't know the Bible. And it's the most foundational book. It's, it's, um, it's life. And uh, it's just another I don't know how I got by here. without it, to be honest. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the reasons why uh, there is, I'm not sure exactly why you thought Jesus was a, a crackpot musician. Maybe you can tell us a, a little magician. bit more. About... <laughs> I, <laughs> Musi well, I, musician. Magician. But, uh, a magician, okay. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I grew up doing, like, card <laughs> tricks and, and, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, it was like, yeah. oh, well, you know, he's just a magician. Whatever. Yeah, you know, he was I didn't... kind of a cool dude. Yeah, he's, he might have been a cool guy, that. you know, charismatic, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. But I, I never really, like, got down into it and thought about it, so. yeah. And, and also one of the reasons why the morality in America has significantly decreased is because if you don't have the Bible and you don't have um, those that are, are preaching it and upholding the, the morality of the Bible, we, we have nothing. There, there is no morality. Right. I, I realized that's why I was so rebellious mm -hmm. and, uh, and so out there with my thinking was because there was no standard anywhere. There was no compass. But... Um, Anyways, we, we need to know the Bible, and we need to teach, teach the Bible to our children. But um, so anyways, uh, so you joined the Navy, mm -hmm. right? And um, why did you join the Navy? Just curious. Uh, well, in high school, I uh, made a lot of bad decisions. Uh, like, I wasn't bad in school, except for English. I failed English a couple times. Yeah. That's a story for another time. But, um, you know, I was, I was doing drugs. I was drinking. <clears throat> My voice just cracked. Um, but, but yeah, like I was, I was heading down this bad, bad road mm -hmm. and I was, you know, I was thinking, okay, well, I'll join the military, you know, mm -hmm. that'll help me get some, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, discipline. discipline yeah. yeah. Discipline mm -hmm. in my life. Cause my parents weren't, you know, they never disciplined me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just kind of ran around, did my own thing. Yeah. And, uh, and I didn't want to turn out like them. And so I cleaned up my act, uh, my, like near the end of my senior year of high school and I enlisted. Uh huh. So, so how long? How long have you been in now? <sighs> what year is it? <laughs> no, uh, I think six years in August. Yeah. Seven years in August. Mm -hmm. Six. Six years. Okay. So right out of high school, uh, graduated. So did you get some discipline going in, going into the Navy? Uh, a little bit. Uh, in some aspects of my life, yeah. Right. Um, but like I was still. Uh, Still got into alcohol yeah. a lot. Mm -hmm. so. That's actually why I asked because uh, if anybody's mm -hmm. familiar with with the military, although there's there's <laughs> many good there's many good aspects to it, but 
um, there's also just there's so much sin that's still yeah. in the military, you know. And, and you know, you'd think like you'd think being in the military, you'd, you'd run into more people openly practicing their faith, mm-hmm. but no, like yeah. I didn't, I, I still didn't get that exposure till mm-hmm. uh, for a while, and so. Yeah, and, and in the same way that God has been taken out of the public realm mm-hmm. in general, schools, the society, and everything, it's also being He's also being taken out of the military. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, for some reason, other religions and even witchcraft yep. is is able to be promoted within mil- the military. Mm-hmm. Um, but but not, and it shows that there's something different there. But um, one of the things I wanted to, to mention about that is that um, when it comes to God and in our understanding of life, um, for a Christian, it's not a religious thing. It, the, being a Christian is not being religious. No. It's not something that, um, like other religions, practicing their religion is an outward thing. Mm-hmm. We we do religious exercises, and the and the reason why we do that is to make God happy, to please God, well, and, I, and to seem I, good to other people. Well, I think being know. a Christian, like Paul, Paul in Acts, or no, not Acts, sorry, Philippians, Philippians one twenty one. He said he puts it the best way, you know, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. Yeah. And, you know, that's, in my opinion, like, that's how I've been living my life. So uh-huh. it, uh, you know, it helps. Uh, that scripture alone, it, it helps me live how I, how I should in God I, God's eyes, you yeah. know. Mm-hmm. So. Well, and um, considering, you know, just the way you grew up, the way I grew up, mm-hmm. the way that the military is, the way that our, our life is, one of the things to understand understand the gospel is that when it comes to morality, the reason why why people live like that in the military, even though it's supposed to be a disciplined realm and everything, is that we we un, when when you take away God, when you take away God's word, mm-hmm. you know you no more have a basis for what's right and wrong. Right. That's the reason why we did the things that we did. And um, you know, there's many people probably watching that don't believe in God. Uh, don't believe in the Bible, but the thing that we're wanting to cause people to ask themselves and to question their beliefs is, uh, if you really, why could you say that anything is right or wrong? If you don't have a supreme God, if there's no supreme lawgiver, if there's no supreme authority who's telling the whole world what's right and what's wrong, if there's not that, then what do we have? Who can, right. Who's to say, why is it wrong to lie? Why is it wrong to steal? Why is it wrong to get drunk in the barracks? You know, why, it's, it's not. And uh, many people say, well, society, you know, but society changes. Mm-hmm. But our, our morality doesn't change, though, between right and wrong. So I'm just pointing these things out to mm-hmm. show that um, every one of us as people, we have an understanding that there is right and wrong. And just like we see with Cody, myself, all of us know that we've done wrong. Uh, the Bible says, for, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And it's not just that we were taught to, you know, do bad things by our parents or by our society. It's not that we were just molded, that we didn't have the best opportunities, and so therefore, you know, I wasn't that great of a person. Right. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that every one of us um, are have a conscience. We know between what, right and wrong, and we have willingly chose to disobey God and, uh, and go astray. The Bible says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Mm-hmm. And our accountability is to God. It's not to our, our government. It's not to um, our society around us, those different things. So we're, we're, all in the same, <coughs> we're all in the same boat. No matter how you grew up, whether you grew up religious, non-religious, whether you thought Jesus was whatever, you That's know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what religion you are. We're all in the same boat. And what that is is that God is holy and we are not. And uh, religion won't save um, reforming your life, trying to be more disciplined, won't save those different things. Are you going to say something? <laughs> yeah, I just really hope when I, on Judgment Day, when I'm standing in front of God, He doesn't call me out on this moment. <laughs> you remember that time well, you called my son a crackpot? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was your understanding of yeah, who He was before was. the gospel came. And uh, we all have <laughs> messed up views of who God is and who Jesus is. Um, before before the gospel comes, I, I never I never really, as far as I can remember, don't remember having conversations with people about God or yeah, even no. thinking about God. Never, like yeah. I never really thought about it. So I don't know what I would have said if you would have <laughs> asked me who Jesus was. Yeah, because I didn't even know. Uh, you know, the the blind man, uh, he was he was born blind. He never saw, and uh, there came a day when Jesus touched his his eyes and healed him. 
and all of a sudden he, he could see. And mm -hmm. if you would have asked him before he was healed, you know, what's your favorite color? You know, I wonder what he would have said. Like, I'm not sure. What are you talking about? You know, I don't know. That's a, that was like my view of God before I came to Christ was, who do you think? Was, I don't know. You know, what do you yeah. think he's like? I don't know. Who's Jesus? I don't know. And uh, the Bible actually says that, um, that the, the blindness of, of people's hearts just by being born into this world and the darkness that's there, the deadness that's there. Um, and we need to hear the gospel in order to be saved. So, so anyways, okay, so you, you join the military, um, still, uh, still no God really in your life and everything. So how did, how did God begin to uh, give you a, a better understanding of who he was? Begin to creep into my life? Yes, yeah, yeah that's um, a good way to put it. Uh, that's how I, uh, well, like I said, I was on the boat uh, in Minnesota uh, with uh, Matt Bertels. Mm -hmm. uh, you had him on the show a while back. And... Uh, you know, there's this guy there, and he's just kind of sitting in the background. You know, I've talked to him a couple times, but he doesn't—he doesn't really. He's not one to really uh, push his faith out. Yeah. The only time he really does, when uh, well, at least on the boat, <clears throat> it was when someone or people would be having a conversation, and they'd start borderlining that point where it's like, "Hold on, let me let me clear up some things." Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's really what sparked me. You guys talking about God or. Just in Whatever. general, uh, like we'd, we'd be talking about politics, really anything, and then eventually like that'll lead to yeah. religion yeah. at some point. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we have had conversations, you know, religious conversations before, um, but nothing really too serious. And so uh, I don't remember what the conversation was one day, but, you know, he pipes in and starts throwing these facts at us. And so it kind of, it was like, okay. So I talked to him a couple times, you know, and I was... Uh, you know, at that time, I was, like I said, a devout pagan, and I never really thought about anything. I was like, yeah, you know, I'm never going to, you know, that's, that's cool for you, but it's not for me, you right, know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was, I think, probably four, three, four years ago. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, left it at that, you know, I talked to him here and there about professional things, you know, personal things here and there. Uh, but really nothing, you know, like, hey, tell me about told me more about this God guy, right. you know? yeah, yeah. And uh, do you remember what so, that one conversation you had? Do you remember what some of those facts were, or some of the things that he was, what you guys were talking about? Uh, well, I mean, he's he's a pretty good apologist. So yeah. Uh, one of the conversations uh, we were talking about wars. Like <laughs> one of the comments was that like every war in the Middle Ages was based was a religious war. Uh -huh. He's like, no, 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 no. Name me one one war that's a religious war. Well, what about the Crusades? Land and power, right? Yeah. So he so he's like every what he what he told us was is, uh, you know every war is based off of land or power except for one. There's only one war in the history of wars that has ever been about religion, mm. uh, and loosely, and that's the and I had to look. I had to go find it, yeah. you know. And he's like, and he because he challenged me. He's like, find one war mm -hmm. that's based on religion. I couldn't. Yeah. I couldn't find it. I was like, I give up. Yeah. I, I don't know. Throw me a bone, man. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like the Seven Day War. Uh, it wasn't even. There's no bloodshed. Right. Uh, I don't know the particulars of it, but that's the only war that could be considered a religious war. Right. Yeah. Seven Day War. Yeah. <laughs> so and you know what's interesting too about that is that you know, take the Crusades for example or whatever. Um, you have people that are in the name of God. In you the know, name flying, of God. Yeah. Crosses. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's for God. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Because they wanted they wanted their land back. Yeah. And so. But they said, oh, well, it's for God that we're going to take this land back. So yeah. Right. And one of the things <laughs> to, to help understand Christianity is that um, the Bible talks about Satan and what he's what he's doing. What one of the things, main things that he's doing is using the name of God, the name of Jesus mm -hmm. in the Bible, to create false religions. And, and do yep. do things in the name of Jesus for leverage in order to push his own agenda. We uh, we watched actually a movie the other night. Uh, I think it was called uh, Time Changers. Yeah, Time, Time Changer. Yeah. Time Changer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they make they, they they they. There's this one quote from that that really makes you think. That, uh, Satan's not against good values. He's against good values in the in the name yeah. of uh, of Christ. Yeah. And so he just wants to take the name out and then. Yes. People because rely that's, on because that's the, that's the yeah, authority. That's the authority. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then people start to rely on themselves instead of, a high, instead of God yeah. and Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what he wants. Yeah, absolutely. So, 
That's that was a bit of a tangent, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's really important because um, you know, as Christians, uh, it, it's it's not about it's not about being religious or doing religious things mm-hmm. because that's what every other religion is about. Right. Catholicism, for example, it's it's following a set of of rules in order to achieve being right before God. Uh, but not so not so with Christian no uh, actually me and you were talking about it before the show uh, you don't you don't change to become right with God yeah you to be saved by Christ yes. you you come to Christ you get saved and it changes you and it, it changed me yeah like, we'll get into that in a little bit <laughs> yeah but, uh, yeah, yeah Jesus sorry. said uh, I came not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance mm-hmm. they that are whole need not a physician but they that are sick mm-hmm. um, Jesus didn't come to uh, find all of the good people and give them eternal life and cast out the bad. No, he came into the world saying, all of you are bad, yep. and I need to die for all of your sins, and you guys repent and come to me, and I'll give you life. Yeah, like uh, my favorite is the parable of the uh, the wedding, the wedding feast, Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, where he sends out... So the, he sends out all the invitations to all the righteous people, mm-hmm. and no one responds. Yeah. And then he sends out the servants to invite all the, uh, everyone, the poor, the sick, yeah. uh, and the broken to the wedding. Uh, and they showed up, and the, uh, the guest, or not the guest of honor, but the, uh, the host yeah. uh, was walking around. And there's this man, not in a uh, you know, wedding garb, in a suit and tie, basically. Yeah. He's like, throw this man out. Yeah. And and that's because he wasn't cloaked in the in the blood of, of Christ. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't wearing Christ as as his uh, as a savior. Yeah. So. All right. So you started to have conversations with Matt, and uh, what what happened from there? Uh, I mean, it was nothing like nothing, uh, you know, ground shaking or groundbreaking or anything. Um, like it didn't cause me to think uh, think any differently. Uh, and so, let's see, August, I got off the boat. Went to shore duty, and you know I was heavily drinking at this time, uh, and engaged to be married in uh, June. And February rolled around, and there had been a couple times where I drank too much, uh-huh. and we'd gotten in arguments, little petty things here and there. And I never thought anything of it, you know. Like I had anger issues. I went to anger management. That didn't help. Uh-huh. Um, it helped for a little bit, but it didn't like really help. Right. Yeah. Um, like I used to be someone, if I dropped my pen or something, it would it would irritate me. Right. And that irritation would grow into to anger, yeah. and that anger would grow into fury. Yeah. And I just didn't want to let it go. And I was unforgiving. I was, you know, <laughs> I was cursing every other word. Yeah. Like I, you name it, and, and you know. I'm I, sorry, like a sailor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like sorry. I was cursing. Yeah, <laughs> I was swearing like a sailor. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But um, February rolled around, uh, this February actually. Uh, it's the first week in February, first weekend. Uh, that Saturday, I, I drank a lot. And we got in an argument, and she couldn't take it anymore, so she left and uh, went over to our friend's house. And there I am alone. Slept it off. Woke up uh, Sunday morning. And I was lonely, and I really, I really started to, you know, feel that emptiness that I never really realized was there inside me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I looked in the mirror. I hated what I saw. Mm-hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't stand myself. And uh, oh man, I'm about to get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> um, that Sunday night, I, uh, I broke down. I got on my knees. I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I was like, you know, God, I, I don't I don't know if you're there. I don't know if you wanna listen to me. Yeah. Um but I need help. Yeah. Um anything, anyone, just please help me. Yeah. And uh I woke up Monday morning. I went to bed after that, I woke up Monday morning mm-hmm. at like five thirty in the morning and I think to myself, I was like, Hey, First thought in my mind was, um, there's that guy Matt on the boat, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And uh, so I messaged him. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Uh, hey, I, I got some questions about God. Can you help me? Yeah. 
and almost instantly he responded. He's like, yeah, uh, uh-huh. you know, we'll let, let's meet up sometime this week. Yeah. So we set up uh, Tuesday. Um, we met up Tuesday uh, at Five Guys. Uh-huh. You know, he's like, well, well, what do you know? I was like, well, I know there's God. I know there's Jesus. He's the son of God, and that he died. Yeah. That's, that's about it. I don't right. really know anything else. Yeah. You know, I, I told him everything that was going on. You know, I was like, dude, I don't even know if I'm worth saving. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and um, he's like, he's like, no, you, you are. And uh, and uh, I was like, dude, I was like, I don't even have a Bible or anything. He's like, that's an easy fix. Yeah. <laughs> And so we got done talking, uh, and uh, we went to uh, Books a Million, picked up this Bible actually right here. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, fits right in my pocket. I don't go anywhere without it now. Uh-huh. And he's like, you know, give it, give it at least 21 days. Give it, give it one day for each, each day, uh, chapter in John. Yeah. So he had me read through John. And he's like, you know, if you ever have a question, it doesn't matter if you think it's small or how, how like, insignificant of a question it is. Yeah. Call me, text me, I'll I'll, I'll help you out. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I was like, well, and I asked him, you know, hey, can I go to church with you Sunday? Yeah. He's like, yeah, sure. I was like, what do you wear to church? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like, I don't, right, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and so that night, I oh, and he also told me, you know, before you read, ask God to show you what you need to see. Yeah. So I get home that first night, and I was like. You know, I was like, God, I don't, I don't know how this works. <laughs> yeah. um, like, I, literally said, I was like, God, yeah. I don't know how this works. Yeah. Um, but but being know, honest, yeah. You know, um, help me, help me see what I need to see, or whatever Matt told me. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. was like it was like the most crude and rudimentary <laughs> prayer ever. But it was genuine. That's yeah. what God's looking for. And so I started reading through John, and it gets to the part where. You know, he's baptizing, uh-huh. and the Pharisees come up to him. He's like, who are you? Who, are you? who gives you this authority? Are you, are you Elijah? Right. And I'm like, who's Elijah? Yeah. I don't know an Elijah. Yeah, <laughs> I've never heard right? this name. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I call Matt. I'm like, hey. Or no, I text Matt. I'm like, hey, who's Elijah? <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, 1 Kings 16. Yeah. I was like, okay. I flip back. <laughs> Like okay, First King sixteen, da, 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 you know. Yeah. So I read, I read all of like all of Elijah and Elisha. Yeah. Like yeah. all in one go. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like where was this when I was growing up? Yeah. Right. And uh, and then I finished, I finished First John. I'm like, like that same night, I was like, man, you know, Elijah was cool. Elisha was cool. Yeah. You know, John was, you know, that was interesting. I'm going to go all the way to the beginning. Yeah. Right? So I go all the way back to Genesis, and I start reading from there. Amen. And uh, um, the next day, it was Wednesday, and uh, I forget, actually, I, don't even, I think I read like halfway through Genesis in one night, uh-huh. to be honest. It, crazy. Because uh, <laughs> I'm not a big reader. reader. Yeah. Um, but the next day, you know, I, I prayed before going to bed. I didn't know. What, once again, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. But the next day, uh, Amanda, that was my fiance, uh, she usually had, uh, oh, excuse me, um, knit night. Uh-huh. It was called on Wednesday nights where she goes and knits with some old people and yeah. talk and whatnot. And, well, she calls me. Well, actually, before that, um, one of my best friends, uh, his name's Case, um, Case Gleeden, he joined the Navy. I, we went to high school together, he joined the Navy. He's actually, uh, he's a Christian, uh, mm-hmm. born again. And he texts me, he's like, hey, uh, you know, I got bad news. I'm not going to be able to make it to your wedding. It's like, oh, that's, that's fine. You know, I understand, you know, it's, you know, Navy. Right. So you can't really control that. And we talked for a few minutes. And then, uh, you know, I told him what was going on. He's like, and, and like from day one, like, I, I, like after that, I woke up that morning and I felt, I felt different. Right, uh-huh. and he's like, you know, I told him what was going on with me and her. And he's like, dude, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm like, don't be sorry. You know, I, I, I feel like it's gonna be okay. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm 
trying to find God right now, you know? And he's like, oh, that's, that's awesome, you know? Yeah. But, uh, you know, praise God. Yeah. He's, he's like, you know, I'll be praying for you. Yeah. And I was like, thanks. And he's like, uh, but then, you know, after that, a few minutes later, Amanda calls me. She's like, hey, uh, I'm going to go to my knit night. I got to swing by the apartment and get my knitting stuff, and I want to talk. Uh-huh. I was like, okay. She shows up. She'd only planned on being there for like an hour. Well, is this, this was the next day? This is right. the next yeah. day, yeah. She'd only planned on being there for an hour. She's like, hey, I want to, you know, I want to reschedule the wedding. Right, my friend had just called me. I just talked to my friend. He's like, he's not going to make it. And I'm like, okay, yeah, <laughs> all right. Yeah. I thought it was weird. I, I see now, you know, th- there's reason behind all, yeah. all, everything. Yeah. Um, but at that time, I was like, okay, that's kind of weird, you know, coincidences. Yeah. So she'd only been planned on being there for an hour. She ended up being there for five, six hours, and we were just talking. Yeah. You know, it was like the best conversation we'd ever had. Yeah. Um, and like I, like I said, I felt, I felt different, you yeah. know? Um, and the week went by, we went to, we went to church. It's where I met you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, first, uh, that first Sunday. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, Pastor Dave was preaching about relationships. Yeah, I was like, okay, this is kind of weird. You know, maybe maybe Matt got a you know, <laughs> right? Yeah, called Dave. Give him a heads up. Yeah, was, hey, about, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, I got this guy coming to church with me. He's going yeah. through relationship issues, right? Yeah. So I was like, I was still kind of on the fence. I was like, <laughs> okay, maybe. Yeah. Um, and then that week, uh, you know, I finished Genesis, and I noticed something in Genesis that I had read in in John one, uh, Jacob's dream at Bethel. Yeah. Um, he dreams, he goes to Bethel, and, and he dreams, uh, God sends him this dream of uh, uh, a ladder that goes from earth to heaven, mm-hmm. uh, and the gates of heaven are open, and the angels are going up and down this, this ladder, and, um, you know, in my mind, I was like, wow, that would be amazing to see, but then I remembered, and I actually have it highlighted, it's, it's Genesis 28, uh-huh. um, which is, it, it's, it's actually important to me, um, Genesis 28 highlighted, right? And I remembered in First John, at the end of it, uh, he says to, or, yeah, uh, Jesus says to John the Beloved, right? John the Beloved. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, you know, you think this is miraculous. You know, yeah. Follow me and you'll, you'll see much greater things. You'll see the he- gates of heaven open upon me and the angels, and, uh, angels of the Lord ascending and descending upon yeah. me. Yeah. Right? And I was like, wow, is this like, is this like a prophecy? Like, what, what is this? This is yeah. crazy. Yeah. You know? And, and I also... I wanted to talk to Matt about the uh, the uh, J- uh, Jacob's last words to his sons, right. particularly uh, particularly Judah. Yeah, you know, he says, "Judah, my son, you're a lion who who can rouse you with a lioness. You'll hold the scepter uh, and rule over your brothers until uh, the one who comes rightfully belongs. The one who drapes his uh, his robes in the blood of grapes and ties his donkey to choice vine." Right. And as I'm reading that, I'm getting this picture of Jesus in my mind. Yeah. And but I'm not sure. So so that Sunday, Sunday morning. Uh, <laughs> I show up at Matt's because, you know, we go to church together. And it's about an hour before church. I'm like, Matt, I want to talk to you about a few things. He's like, okay, well, what you got, brother? And I was like, Cause, you know, that's how he talks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> uh, I was like, okay, well, first off, it, I bring up Jacob's uh, last words to his sons. Yeah. And I'm like, is this, is this a, a depiction of Jesus? And he's like, well, let's go to uh, the descendancy of Jesus. So he opens Matt, well, Matthew 1. Yeah. And we go over that. Yeah. Right, and then I couldn't remember where where I had it tabbed or highlight. At the time, it was tabbed. Uh, I just had a sticky right. sitting right there in the book, not sticking out of the book, so I couldn't find it. Right. I was like, I was like, there's something else in here that I that I had tabbed. I don't know where it is. Uh, but I, I told we talked about it. You know, Jacob's dream at Bethel. Yeah. And so we were just talking, and we finished our conversation at I think it was about twenty. 25 minutes before church, uh-huh. and we're going to uh, Merciful Redemption uh-huh. over in uh, Groton, where Pastor Greg was the guest pastor. Yeah. And, you know, we get through the, hy- the, the hymns and whatnot, and Pastor Greg, you know, prays, and he's like, he says, uh, I want to start this off with a reading from uh, Genesis. Yeah. If, you, if everyone could open to Genesis 28. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and I open it up, I'm like, I nudge Matt, I show him, like, I don't, where your I don't like. Note is yeah, it's where my sticky yeah. note is, right? It's highlighted now because it, it was just that important to me, right? And the whole, like, and, and Pastor Greg is, you know, talking about how amazing this, this, this dream is. And he talks about how sometimes God gets us alone 
so he can show us our need for him, yeah. right? And I'm like, whoa, yeah. no, <laughs> no, no. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting there. I'm like, I, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then to go one step further, he goes into Judah's last words to his sons. He goes into Jesus' descendancy. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, there's no way, there's no way Matt called him, hey, Greg. Yeah, he gave uh, him a heads up. <laughs> yeah, hey, Greg, we're coming Matt's in. Matt's calling all the preachers. Yeah, up. Matt's calling all the preachers, getting them to change their sentence. No, sons. God went ahead. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's what really solidified it for me. I was like, okay, I, you, okay, you got me. Amen. I'm yours. Yeah. You know, uh, that same day, um, Actually, was it that? Yeah, it was that same day. Um, what was that, a week? Was that a week after? It was two the... weeks in. Okay, yeah. Two weeks in. Yeah. Right? And, I, and I'm now like, this is an accident, right? Yeah. Amanda's starting to see this change in me. I, and, and, and when I, that first Sunday when I, when I told God I needed help, or no, it was Tuesday, I think, after me and Matt talked, I, you know, when I prayed that night, I was like, you know, God, if, if this is real, you know, I'm, I'm never going to touch alcohol again. Yeah. You know, I'm going to live, I, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do this the right way. Yeah, amen. And I just want to, so, I want to make a note before you go in, and I want to hear more about how God started <laughs> to change you and everything, but something that's so important in, in all of that that you just said is that the, the answer for everything was in the Bible. It was, yeah. When, and when you went to Matt um, and asked him about God, and you guys <laughs> met at uh, the restaurant and everything, and he's talking to you from the Bible. You guys go and buy a Bible. And he's saying to you, why don't you read the book of John? Yeah. Okay, this is what separates true Christianity from the other religions, is, is the Word of God. Because if Matt was a Jehovah's Witness, he would have pulled out some books and said, here, <laughs> here read these books, you know, or a Mormon or a Catholic. You know, oh, if you want to find out about God, you first need to come to church, join the church, yeah. you know, and learn, learn what the church teaches and all these or, you know, Matt, I need help. And uh, Matt says, well, you need to, uh, you know, change your life. You, you, you know, go start to, doing your yeah. prayers. To join. No. Uh, the gospel is, is the word of God. Um, it actually says in Peter um, that we're born again, not by corruptible seed, mm-hmm. but by incorruptible, by the word of God. Um, and there's the parable of the sower in the Bible. The, the seed is, is the, the word of God. Yep. And uh, when, we, when, when somebody hears the word of God, that's what teaches about salvation. Um, the Bible calls Jesus that he is the word of God, and it's him. It's receiving the word and receiving Jesus. That's all you need to be born of God, to become his son, to know God, to experience him, to have a change in your life. And uh, there, there may be somebody watching that thinks, you know, I, I just, you know, I don't know what, where I need to go to. That's where you need to go to. You, if you want to know about God, Go straight to the Bible and, and ask God to teach you. And uh, he said, if you seek for me and search for me with your whole heart, you will find me. Um, man does, man, no man or no religion uh, has a corner on God. Um, God is freely, he's accessible to anyone who will come through him, and it's through, it's through the word of God. And uh, it's just, uh, that's so important because uh, mm-hmm. so many other people would point different ways. I'm glad that he pointed you straight to God's word and, and notice how it's God's word that did the changing in, in mm-hmm. a life. So, okay, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> where was I? Um, where was I? You were talking about, um, maybe it's, I think you were starting to talk about the drinking. Oh something. yeah. 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 You know, I, I had told, you know, I told God, I was like, I'm not, I'm never going to drink again. You know, if this, yeah. if this, you know, and, uh, yeah. And, and, and I hadn't, like, I used to like, before that, I, before that Tuesday, I had this craving for alcohol. Yeah. After that Tuesday, I have I haven't had a craving for alcohol since. Yeah. I was at a I was at actually uh, my uh, my LPO, uh, her boss basically. Yeah. Um, for those non-military folk. Yeah. Um, he he was having this get together. There's alcohol there, and you know everybody's drinking. I'm the only one not drinking. Yeah. And I, you know, I was a big social drinker. Yeah. And. I I didn't have that that urge. I didn't I didn't right. want it. Right. You know, yeah. I I yeah. didn't I don't yeah. need it. Yeah. Um so and and that was that was amazing. Amen. Um Amen. Uh one of the things that we uh just this last week I was going to mention before we had uh our meetings at the church what is your life? Yeah. And um which was which was great. The the meetings went very well. But um the whole point of those meetings was uh showing that 
uh, we all have a, a, a purpose on the earth, and that purpose is found in God. It's mm -hmm. found in our Creator. Uh, I think you even mentioned there that uh, there's something inside yeah, like, that's missing. Yeah, like before, before I, like, I, like I said, I, I felt empty. Yeah. And, I, and there was nothing I, like I tried different things, you know, fill, you know, buying things. Yeah. You know, this is a materialistic world. Yeah. And like I couldn't, I couldn't fill that, that void. Yeah. And I didn't really know love. Yeah. Uh, in the true sense. Right. Um, and so, and when I started, the more I read and the more I, the more I learned, um, you know, that, the, so that, that Wednesday, I guess it would have been, I felt fulfilled. You know, yeah. I, I, I felt full, right? Um, and that following week, you know, I felt this, this feeling that it was, it was radiating out of me. I wanted to get rid of it. Yeah. Not like, get, like throw it away, yeah. like, oh, yeah. get this out of me. I wanted to share it with people. Yes. And, and I still do. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, we were talking that first Sunday, I think. And I was telling you how, um, you know, the trees, like, everything seemed brighter. <laughs> yeah, Every, all the yeah. sounds seemed clearer, more beautiful. And I was yeah. seeing, it was like I was seeing the world for the first time. Yes. Yeah. And I was, yeah. spiritually. Yeah. Uh, you know, because my, my eyes had actually been open. Yeah, amen. Uh, to the beauty of this world. And, and the more I read and everything, uh, I mean, I could talk about this for hours. Yeah, but amen. The more I read and the more I got to know uh, God better, um, you know, as best as I can with my understanding. I mean, it, and it was, it just keeps getting more beautiful and more amazing. And now I'm at this Amen. point, I'm like, you know, in my, like, I keep thinking like, man, the guy, the being that made all of this, that made everything we see, yeah. that, that causes everything to happen, yeah. you know, he knows me. Yeah. He knew me from the beginning. He knows my name. He wants to know my name. Yeah. He knows me better than I know me. And he loves me better than I could ever love me. Yeah. Like, why would I not want to know him? Yeah. Why would I not want to love him? Right. Amen. You know, it's, and it's crazy yeah. to think about. <laughs> like, it's, it, it boggles my mind to try to think about my old life yeah. before Christ. Yeah. It, and it, I, can't, I can't, you know, fathom, like, you living remember. any... No, yeah. I can't fathom living yeah. like that ever again. Yeah, well, the Bible teaches <laughs> that, that that person is dead. Yeah. <clears throat> that we're dead in Christ. Saying, and, um yeah, he's Second Corinthians, is Second a new, Corinthians new creation. The old things are passed away. Behold, all things, all things are become new. Mm -hmm. Not just, you know, not swearing anymore, not drinking anymore. No, all things are become new. Yeah. Nature, you know, my everything. thoughts about things, morality, every, everything, how we see everything. <clears throat> um, it's because when um, what the Bible teaches that we need to be born again, <clears throat> and uh, Jesus taught that if you're not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Or to put it another way, that you can't begin to experience God and His working in the world without being born again. Um, you know, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Mm -hmm. And now, what we were talking about this last week, too, is that um, we've been, the reason why we were created was to be spiritual and, and to be children of God. But because of sin, that has all been, that's all been cut off. We've all been separated from God. We've all been in darkness We've been in, in, a, in, a, in a false world, spiritually, a dead world. Yeah. And life, true life begins in God. Yeah. It begins I, well, in Jesus. Well, you know, I, I was down, you know as, you, as you know, I was down in Kentucky for a month. Uh -huh. And uh, that, really, that, that really helped me grow even more as a, as, a, you know, as a Christian. But one of the things that uh, one of the pastors said down there in one of his sermons, he, he said just that, but he put it in this way. He's, you know, we're all, <coughs> wow. <laughs> my voice today um, tell you what um, but you know God creates each and every one of us when we're in the womb yeah and and he he gives us our identity then yes but then we're born in this world of sin and our identity is stolen from us yeah right and so now we're, we're living this life without an identity and we're empty and we don't have that f that feeling of fulfillment because we don't have our identity yeah. and that's all we want is our identity yes. in Christ yeah and so when we finally turn back to Christ it's like we're given our identity back. Yeah, absolutely. We're given our identity back in the in the eyes of God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one way to think of it. <laughs> yeah. One way to think of it is, you know, uh, many people don't feel like they have worth at all. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if 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 we were the sons of of the president, you know, we could look at that yeah. and say, hey, you know, I 
I do. I, I, do, I have some worth here, you know, I'm like s- children of royalty, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, when you're when you're born again and God teaches you that you're His son, mm-hmm. that you're the son of the the highest, the of son the living of the, God. Yes. Yeah, children of the living God, that you don't need now to find your identity in any of these other groups yep. that the, that you used to fit into in the world. Uh, you no longer have to go to these other outside sources to bring them into your mm-hmm. body or into your life to find that fulfillment. Because if, if you have him, yep. and I'm a son of him, and he loves me, well, and like he's, what, what really, he's blessing me, like where else do you need for, to go? For me, what really put it in perspective, and I didn't, I didn't actually drop to my knees and, and say, you know, Christ, I, you are my savior. I didn't, I didn't say those words until right. after I watched this, move, uh, this video. And it was it was the sec, uh, uh, after that second sermon, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Rachel, Matt's wife, uh, showed us a video. Uh, it was on YouTube. It's uh, Eric Ludi, the yeah. Gospel, mm-hmm. and he paint he the way he breaks down the Gospel into it's like it it, it moved me to the core. Uh, you know, he basically he starts off. You know, we're all rebels. We're chained to sin in this prison, yeah. and uh, and, you know, because of our rebellion against God, you know, the, the enemy has legal rights to, to harm yeah. us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then intercepts the predecessor, and, it, you know, it's Jesus, right. and he takes the blow for you. Right. And, yeah. then, and then because he took the blow for you, the, the shackles, are, you're free, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and, and he says, you know, but this is where everyone stops with the good news. Right. And, and he says, you know, we're, we're in this prison cell now. And we're we're thanking God. Thank you for changing the sign outside the prison. Right. Yeah. And and he says, you know, well, God says, well, hold on, my 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 sh- my blood was shed for so much more than this. Yeah. Could you check the door? And so you you open the door and and, and you're free. You're in this beautiful field and yeah. and this chariot of the king rolls up. Yeah. And it's an invitation to be to to come into his presence yeah. or uh, yeah. uh, to the kingdom of God. Yeah. And you're like, are, are you are you sure me? Like I. I was a rebel. Yeah. You know, I spat in my God's face and he yeah. wants me to come, you know, live with him. Yeah. And then you're, you know, you're approaching the, the, the city and you're looking for the poor district, you know, like, where, where are you going to drop <laughs> me off? Yeah. Where's he, where are you dropping me off? Oh, he wants you in his near presence. He wants to yeah. adopt you. Yeah. And, and, you know, in that moment, you're like, wait, hold on, what? Yeah. He wants to adopt me. Even yeah. though I was a rebel, I spat in his face, I cursed his name, Amen. I, I did all these sinful acts that are just detestable to him, and he wants to adopt me? This man wants to adopt me. Yeah. You're out of your mind, right? Like, that's what most people would think. Yeah. And so, and so you know, you come in, into, the, into the presence of the king, and, and you fall to your knees, a broken man. And, and I, you know, I finished that video, and I was just so deeply moved, like, that night. I, I fell to my knees and I, you know, I said, God, you know, I, I, I'm yours. You know, I want, I want Christ to be my savior. Yeah. I, you know, you bled for me. I will bleed for you. Yeah. I will do anything you tell me to do. Yeah. I am yours completely. Not yeah. just part of me, not just, you know, oh, everything but that corner. No, all of me. Yeah. I want you to come in and shine a light everywhere inside me. Yeah, amen. <laughs> <laughs> so, amen. And, and the gospel is just so beautiful yeah amen amen <laughs> and that shows uh you know that's that uh that video i haven't been able to watch that yet i, I want to but yeah, um, it's but the really point, good the, and and listen to what is is being said here it's um you know christians are not saying that uh everybody else is bad people and mm-hmm. and we're good people we're, we're good people and that no we're all rebels and the reason why we can say that we know we have eternal life, the reason why we can have confidence in what we believe is not because of our own goodness. Mm-hmm. It's because of everything that Jesus Christ did. You have, I mean, it's, it's said so simply and, and glossed over so quickly that Jesus was dying for our sins. But you're talking about the Son of God who was eternal, had no beginning. He had no sin, was perfect, pure, in the presence of God. He was the one Mm-hmm. That should yeah. have that when the chariot rides yep. up and him jump in and say you're my son. Yeah, he was the only one that earned mm-hmm. that. That was worthy of that. But he chose rather yep. to become our rebellion yep. and to suffer the wrath of God. So 
Eternal life is free. It's a free gift. Anybody who wants it can come. You don't have to do anything for it other than to admit you're yep. sinful. It's free, but it came at the highest cost, Ray, the highest uh, price that could have ever been given. Ray Comfort, I think, puts it probably the best way uh, when it comes to actually uh, you know, being saved and how it's free is uh, you, know, you jump out of a plane and your parachute's next to you. Is that parachute going to save you? Right. Yeah. Of course not. Yeah. What do you have to do? You have to put it on. Right. And that's what you have to do with Jesus. You know, you have to you have to put him on. Yeah, faith. You have to ask him. And that's that's what you were doing mm -hmm. that night. Is uh, yeah. you know, everyone can hear the gospel, um, and people can hear and understand. But if they don't choose to repent and believe to trust in him, yeah, um, there's your your sal you won't be saved. And praise God, that's what you were doing that night, trusting, yeah, and receiving. Uh, the Bible says uh, that as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So, praise God. Yeah, praise God. Were you going to say something else? or? Uh, uh, well, I mean, yeah, kind of. So the yeah, last, a, few, a few more minutes. But so yeah. the last part of, the, uh, of that gospel video which is also important, um, the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're kneeling before the king. You're, you're saying, you know, I'm unworthy to be your child. You know, but, but you, you saved me. You yeah. know, I, 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 I shouldn't be here. And then... Uh, you know, he gives us the great commission: go, make make uh, disciples of all men. Yeah. And and you look up at him and and you say, you know, yeah, yeah, I'll do anything. You 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 gave your life for me. I'll do anything for you. Amen. And uh, as you're getting up to leave, you know, he says, hold on, you know, you can't do it alone. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you go out there, you'll die. You know, but you're, you know, I'll, you know, you want me to die for you? You want me to go in there and be slaughtered? I will. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and this is the most mind-blowing thing of it all is that he he wants to go with you yeah you know it says you know let me come into you yeah let your eyes be my eyes yeah. let your mouth speak my words let my let your arms be my arms yeah uh you know i'm sending you uh, i'm sending you a, a sheep among wolves yeah right but my sheep have the faces of lions yeah amen and so and and that's that's probably the most perplexing part of the gospel to me is that not only not only does does he want to adopt us for spitting in his face, yeah. peeping his car, whatever you know? Th <laughs> you think think of it in today's terms. You know, yeah, you, yeah. you go to your principal's office or house, you egg his house, you, you know, you, you do all this nasty stuff to him, yeah. and he wants to adopt you, yeah. right? And then he wants to go with you everywhere you go, just to, to make sure you succeed in everything. Yeah, and it amen. just it blows my mind that amen. you know he could have and he could have just stopped with. With giving us that safety blanket, you right. know, with yeah. Jesus dying on the cross, right? He could have just left it at that. Okay, yeah. now you can be saved. But he continues to walk with us. He continues to Amen. give us this, uh, you know. And that's a part of the same thing. Yeah. With the, with the purpose, our identity, the reason yeah. we've been created. Every every person wants to have a, a purpose, not just to be saved. Yeah. But um, God made us to build. He made us mm -hmm. to build and to achieve. And the only place we'll truly find, really, our where we fit is in his kingdom mm -hmm. and in serving in his kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Uh, and that's what we're, we're doing here this evening. That's, that's why we're here. That's why we're talking about these things because um, salvation is not just for a select few. It's not for certain people of certain religions. Um, eternal life, forgiveness, uh, relationship with God, knowing God, serving together with God is for all people. It's for everyone, everywhere. And uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. But he's calling today. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to come. Uh, so come, come to Jesus today. Go into God's Word. Go into the book of John. Begin to read and uh, be honest before God, and, and he'll show himself to you. So it's good to have you. Our time's up. <laughs> it's good to it's be good here. good to have you here. Praise God to see what God is doing in your life. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we're excited to see what he's going to continue to do. So um, thanks for everybody for watching this evening, understanding the gospel. We'll see you next week, Monday at 6 p.m. God bless.